Welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church. We are continually worshiping as a virtual community during this time of COVID-19 as a way to protect ourselves, our neighbors, our community, and our world. As we have gathered to provide you with this digital worship experience, we will continue to pray and sing together and be community as one another. And so now we invite you to continue with worship with us as we will join together praying this prayer. And I invite you to take an attitude of prayer, whatever that may be for you at this time. Gracious and loving God, as we gather together at this time, through all corners of space, through all time of being, let us truly feel connected to you and to our sisters and brothers in Christ and love. Let us know that we are not alone, but that your care and love enfolds us all. Amen. We now invite you to sing, us, sing with us in whatever way you are able, as we will sing our song, Have Thine Own Way. So I invite you to hear these words from the Gospel of Matthew. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors and do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Thanks be to God. I remember in one of the first churches I served, one of the little old ladies came to me one day, and she was distraught. She was struggling. She said, every Sunday, we say the Lord's Prayer together. 
We in unison say this prayer, and I've done it my whole life. But I'm struggling, she says. When the scripture says, lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. She said, does the Lord's Prayer say that God leads us into temptation? Because the God I believe in wouldn't do that. And she was so distraught at this one line. And I don't blame her. There's something here about saying, lead us into temptation. We say, Lord, don't lead us in temptation. So does that mean that God does that? What do we do with this part of the Lord's Prayer? Now, if you haven't figured out already, as we've been doing this, this is the fifth week of this series, there's more to the story, more to what the prayer could actually mean than we've always thought. So let's dive in to today's uh, today's part of the story of the prayer. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, some translations say, Lord, lead us not into the time of trial. Okay, that's different than temptation. A time of trial. Don't lead us to be judged, maybe. But there's actually another way to look at this as well. The Greek here is para, paraisian. And that actually translates better as lead us not into testing. Now, when I hear the word testing in the scripture, my mind always goes to the book of James. And so I want to read with you what the book of James says about this. Let me, for some reason, my Bible's in Spanish right now. Let me get it back to English. Okay, here we go. Um, well, okay, my Bible's in Spanish, and I'll have to figure that out later. Okay, but what James tells us here is that do not say that you are being tempted by God, for God cannot tempt, but that we are tested, and we are tested by our own desires and our own will and our own ways. And then after a while, that testing, when we allow ourselves to push the limits, can lead into temptations. You know, I think about when I go grocery shopping. And let's say I'm grocery shopping, and I'm walking around, I'm getting all the things on my list, the things I need. And then I notice that my favorite candy is on sale. Now for me, that'd be Reese's. I love Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. And so, ooh, I'll grab one Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. You know, I know I shouldn't. I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to be aware of it. But one can't do me wrong. But then I notice, you never have grocery stores. They always say, but if you buy two, you get it for this price. Okay. You know, if I buy two, I get a lot cheaper than if I just buy one. Okay, I'll buy two. But then you notice it's a buy four or more, and it's another price. It's even cheaper. Okay, I'll, I'll buy four. But I won't eat them all in one sitting. I would never do that, right? Well, we push the limits as human beings. We push the limits of what things mean. We like to tempt ourselves. We like to push the boundaries and say, well, okay, just a little bit of this. Just a little bit of that. And we keep pushing the line farther and farther. We all know what it means to be tempted. We're tempted every day in our lives with so many different things. And temptations never start out big. They start small. But when we give in to a little temptation, then a little bit more, and a little bit more, it keeps going. So when we say in Scripture, lead us not in temptation, when we talk about temptation or testing, we realize we're the ones tempting ourselves. We're the ones testing ourselves or putting us through our own times of trial. We're the ones that provide struggles for ourselves. But I, I want to go back for a second what my church member talked about. Does God tempt us? 
Is God the one that leads us into temptation so we have to pray to God not to do this? In Hebrew or in Greek, one thing that's important to remember is punctuation, specifically commas, are not used. So when we read it, we just put it in there. Lead us, Lord, not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. But maybe there needs to be some commas placed in here. Lead us, Lord, comma. That's saying, God, I want you to lead me, to guide me, to be with me. Lead me wherever I go, comma. Not into temptation, not into times of trial or testing, because God, I know that I'm easily tempted. I know that I easily want things I shouldn't, want to do things I shouldn't. So God, I need you to lead me so that I am not tempting myself. We all know what it's like to want things we don't want. This week I was reading, for, looking for examples, historical or also current, about stories of what it, of, to kind of get at that point of why we want things that we know we shouldn't and why we're tempted. And I ran across Captain James Cook. Now, Captain James Cook was a well-known British captain of a sailing fleet. And during his time, scurvy was destroying fleets. Almost all the sailors would get scurvy and die or get sick and, and couldn't keep going. And so James Cook was trying to figure out what, how could he prevent scurvy from his ship? Well, in conversation and, and some research, he realized that many German sailing ships didn't get scurvy that often. And he didn't quite know why, but one thing he noticed about these German ships is they ate lots of sauerkraut. So he said there must be some correlation between sauerkraut and not getting scurvy. Now, we know today what it is, it's vitamins. There's more vitamin C in sauerkraut, and we know that vitamin deficiency is one thing that causes scurvy. They didn't know that quite back then. So James Cook decided he was gonna start making his sailors eat sauerkraut. Now, if it was me, I love that because I love sauerkraut. But if you're my wife or my kids, you don't. And they, like those sailors, refused to eat the sauerkraut. So Captain James Cook had to get creative. He had to think, how can I get my sailors to eat sauerkraut so they don't get scurvy? Well, he had an ingenious idea. You see, what he did was he put the sauerkraut at the officer's table. Because sailors were always told, you can't eat the same food the officers eat. You can't eat what's on their table. And he noticed as soon as he put the sauerkraut on the officer's table, the sailors began wanting to eat it. I don't know what it was. Maybe they're thinking, well, the officers get this. I want it too. And then after a few days, he opened up the officer's table to the sailors. And they began to eat the sauerkraut. And scurvy was not as much of a problem. You know, we want things we can't have. We all know what it's like to be tempted in this world. So I think what's important when we pray this prayer, lead me, God. Lead me in the ways I need to go. But I know that I'm going to tempt myself. I know I'm going to want things I shouldn't. I'm going to go ways I shouldn't. I'm going to do things I shouldn't. I need you to lead me and help me not to be tempted. And then the story goes on, but deliver us from evil. Now, this translates literally as deliver us from the evil one. And so we have to ask ourselves, well, what is the evil one? It's not some guy in red with a pitchfork and horns. I think one thing that's here is it goes back to what we talked about last week. Lead us not, or from Forgive us our trespasses, or we also use the word sin. And the word sin in Greek is hamatartia, which means to miss the mark. Sometimes I think the evil one is that which leads us to miss the mark. That which leads us to do things we shouldn't. 
Temptation comes from the evil one. So what does it mean for you this week to every day begin your day with, God, lead me. Lead me in your ways today. And when I am tempted to do things I shouldn't, when I am tempted to want things I shouldn't, when I am tempted by the evil of this world, by the sin, and when I am tempted to miss the mark, be with me and help me. I'm going to have to say that I think this part of this prayer is so apropos for us here in what we're going through in our culture and our world right now. Because one of the temptations we have as people throughout this world is not to care for others. You know, I've been reading stories this week of people saying, I don't need to isolate. I'm young. I'm healthy. It's not going to affect me. I can do whatever I want. But that's a temptation. A temptation to say that we don't need others. That we don't need to be in community. But that's what God created us for. So God, lead me to care for others. Lead me to reach out to others. And when I feel that I'm being tempted to go down paths I shouldn't, when I feel that I'm being led astray by my own desires, my own temptations, by the evil here in this world, be with me. Amen. We now come together for a time of prayer. And as we have each week, I'm going to use some categories as a way to guide us through this prayer time. And after each category, there'll be a time of silence for you to lift up a prayer to yourself and in the space that you are. And then I'll say, Lord, and together we can respond here our prayer. So I invite you to join with me in an attitude of prayer, whatever that may be for you at this time. Lord, let us pray for those who are hurting and suffering. Lord, Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the joys of our lives and all that we experience from God as blessings. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the communities in which we live and serve as disciples of Jesus. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for the world, its people, and all of its leaders. Lord, hear our prayer. And now let us join together and pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are continually to be church at this time. The slogan we are using is building clothes, ministry ongoing. And we want to let you know that we are continually to do more and more ministry as, as we are able. We're offering prayer groups, virtual coffee hours, 
video studies using our platform called Zoom. You can find out more on our church website. But we are also continuing to make sure we care for our community around us. And you're going to be hearing more as we go into the month of April about how we can find ways to care for those around us through our Sandwich Sunday program and our meals to the homeless as well. As we will be without worship as a community gathering in a physical space through April. But we will continually come together to provide some type of virtual gathering for you. But to do this, we need your help. We ask that if you are able to continue to share with us your financial gifts, you can mail them into the church. We're checking our mail, and then we're making deposits as needed. You can also go to our church website, and at the bottom of the, the home page, there is a place to do online giving. You can use bill pay through your local church as well. We are called to use our gifts and share those gifts with others. And so we pray and hope that you will continue to do that so we can continue to be in ministry here at Wesley United Methodist Church. We now will sing a song that is new to us. The tune you will know. The tune is called Beach Spring. It's one that you will quickly recognize. But the song itself is called When We Face an Unknown Future. It was written by a Presbyterian pastor named Carolyn Winfrey Gillette. And she wrote it specifically for the time we are in here in this world. So we invite you to sing this song along with us.
we are living in is filled with God's love. And we pray that God will lead us and guide us through this time. And now hear these words. To all of those to whom love is a stranger, may they encounter in you a generous friend. Amen. Amen.